With eight days to go before Britain's general election, opinion polls are showing the two main parties deadlocked. Despite delivering strong economic growth, David Cameron's Conservatives have failed to pull away from Labour. The Prime Minister is now pulling out all the stops to try to win re-election. With me to discuss the election campaign is Beth Rigby, the FT's Deputy Political Editor, and John Gapper, the FT's Chief Business Commentator. Beth, if I could ask you first, why hasn't it happened yet for the Conservatives in the campaign? They have a leader that's rated more popular than Labour's, they've got a strong economic recovery, but the polls are not reflecting that in a show of support for them. I think there's two factors. The first one is on the economy, while the Tories can say that they have heralded the economy well. Uh, the issue that they've got is do voters still feel it? So they can see that there is economic recovery, but they don't necessarily feel that their lives are improving or their household budgets are improving. So somehow the Tories have to convince voters that if they stick with them post-election, as the economy continues to recover, they will feel better off under a Conservative government. The second issue is a slightly longer term issue that they've had, which is detoxifying the brand. Um, David Cameron made some efforts to do this in the last election. We all remember the big society. And those efforts have faded a bit uh, in this government. And so part of the problem is they're stuck with the core vote, but they've failed to appeal to more modernised and central ground voters that might consider voting Tory, but this time they're not convinced. If I could bring you in here, John, I mean, we're talking about problems with the Conservative brand, but Labour have a brand problem with business, don't they? There's, there's an instinctive suspicion of Labour. Tony Blair, clearly under new Labour, put, put a great deal of effort into that and was pretty successful, actually. Ed Miliband really hasn't taken that approach. Uh, he's been not confrontational, but he's said, we are going to make changes. He's talked about broken markets. Many of the policy initiatives he's announced have actually upset or at least uh, put on the back foot a lot of businesses. So I, I think for, for business leaders, there's a sense of we have to be persuaded and this guy's not really trying to persuade us very hard. Now, Beth, you went to an event recently in, in London where the Prime Minister was trying to woo small business. Do you think he was effective in persuading them that his party is the party of small business? I think the Tories would always argue that they are the party of small business and certainly what you saw with Labour in terms of their business offer, what they almost did was suggest that they were on the side of small business against big corporates and they announced reversal in corporation tax cuts to actually fund tax breaks for smaller businesses. But uh, David Cameron has really stepped up the campaign this week. He's, you know, a business event, he's standing up, there's no more time for seats anymore at Cameron rallies. He's showing passion, he's pumped up, he said that himself, they are not me. And I think when you talk to Tory strategists about what's going on, what they say is, this is the final leg now, and you need to turn up the dial when you're in the final days of a campaign. And, and the point of all of this is, we've been going at this for eight weeks now, really, and the polls have not moved. And I think partly what David Cameron is now trying to do is go more a bit with his instinct. So instead of listening to strategists about saying, this is what you need to do, you need to stand behind this lectern and you need to present in this way, he's now saying, well, look, I need to somehow bring voters over in these final days and I'm going to go with my gut and nearly one in three voters I think are still undecided so there is still everything to play for. And of course if those polls don't change in the remaining days of the campaign um, we could be facing the prospect of a change of government. John how concerned is business about a Miliband administration and what do you think it would mean in practice for them? Well, I think uh, you can see from the point of view of investors and businesses, there's a great deal of uh, not only suspicion, but actually uncertainty as to what exactly it would mean, whether or not, for example, interventions in things like banking and the energy markets, policies that Labour has announced, would extend into other sectors. I think it was significant that earlier this week when the, a couple of polls showed a Tory lead, Sterling strengthened quite significantly. So there's a sort of pent-up feeling of uncertainty. And Beth... Finally, to, to you, I mean, with only a few days now to go, do you see either of the main parties in a position where they might be able to break away? The Tories think that they are getting some traction 
with this whole line on an SNP Labour government. They think that plays well on the doorstep. Uh, on the Labour side, they would argue, well, actually, we have a better ground war. All the Ashcroft polling suggests that in the marginals, they're making much more voter contact and that they will actually pick off these core seats and that they will edge it. But it's still really tight and it's really difficult to see which side will break out. I actually think the rational voter doesn't wake up until 10 days before the poll because why should you concentrate unless you're from a small group of policy professionals and people who are inherently interested in this. So I think that we haven't really seen much movement in the polls. Maybe we won't. But if there is going to be a movement, it, I, I wasn't going to expect it before around now. So I think it gets very interesting now. Beth Rigby, John Gapper, thank you very much. And for more on this, please follow our coverage at ft.com forward slash general election.